Good morning. It's still morning time. I'm, I'm about five minutes late getting online, but praise God I'm here. There are thunderstorms rolling through. Hopefully the power stays on and I can continue with um, live prayer this morning. I'm excited to be here. My name is Autumn Mims. If you're watching, let me know you can hear me. I'm just going to do a quick test. I'm excited to be here. Yes. Looks like the sound is working. Um, the Lord has laid a devotional on my heart this morning. Well, actually, I've been meditating on it for a few weeks now. The Lord just will not let me out of John chapter 15. I am gleaning so much from that study right now, and it is really speaking loud to me. And there's something I've been thinking about, chewing on, um, asking the Lord how to develop that within me. And so today... I want to share a, a little word that's been on my heart called draining drama and complete joy. Draining drama and complete joy. And I know you're saying to yourself, okay, how can those two fit in the same sentence? Well, hopefully after today, you will discover how you can turn your draining moments in life into joyful, complete moments in Christ. Amen. Amen. So I've been meditating on joy for several weeks now. And several weeks ago in a church service, the Lord spoke to me very clearly and said, um, Awaken awaken. That was the word he said to me. Clothe yourself in righteousness. And as I began to pray into that, he, he showed me a number of things. He took me through some scriptures. And then I began to ask myself and what I needed to awaken within myself. And I, I talked to the Lord about it. And I asked him, Lord, what is it that I need to awaken in my life to be more fruitful for you. And he pointed out joy. He asked me, how joyful are you, Autumn? He pointed out to me that my weakness right now was that I was not walking in joy. And it's amazing to me when, when you feel like your life is okay, you feel like things are going along all right, but then the Lord will poke at something that needs his um, work, right? And so he said, Autumn, you've lost your joy. And I want to restore that to you. And for me, as I've been doing this, I have discovered that joy is almost like um, unforgiveness. You, you think you've forgiven someone and you've prayed about it and you've repeatedly taken it to the Lord and asked the Lord to help you with it. But then you find yourself um, meditating on what that person did again or going over the um, the initial event in your mind and and you and you decide you're going to take it back to the Lord again and joy almost feels elusive like that at times too right it's something we have to work on and uh, joy is something we, that we really have to strive to keep right and I have learned that, my joy was not complete. My joy was not full in him. 
And the Lord pointed that out to me. He said, where, where is your joy? Where is the joy of the relationship that you have with me? You're not displaying it. It's not readily evident to those around you. And so the past few weeks, I've been on a, a journey with the Lord. And I asked the Lord, show me in the scriptures where I need to focus and restore the joy of my salvation. Bring me back, Lord, to the joy of my salvation. That's been my prayer. Show me where I'm lacking joy. And listen, I'm going to watch for comments on my, I have my phone going at the same time. So if you have comments, um, I'll try to answer those. Let me know you're here. Let me know you're watching. All right, I'm going to read in John 15. This is where we're going to start today, and then we're going to pray. We're going to pray about joy. All right, I'm reading in John 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, but a servant, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. And this scripture immediately makes me go to, um, to the fruit of the Spirit. What, are, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Um, all of those are representative of a person who is abiding in Christ's love, who is abiding in the vine, right? And we see in John 15, 9 through 17, he's discussing his abiding love. Today, I really want to focus in on the perfecting of joy and love in our lives. And the, the things that the Lord has shown me the past couple of weeks have been almost a revelation to me. I think if we look at the television the news can be very disturbing, very heartbreaking, and very sad. I have weeped with the parents on TV crying for their children who were lost in that shooting in Texas. I think all of our hearts are saddened and grieved at what has taken place. Um, in Texas. At the same time, I'm reminded of the war in, in the Ukraine, the trouble overseas that is happening right now, and the violence in our own nation, the division in our own nation. Um, it is easy to lose your joy as you are watching these things unfold. More closer to home, I have a friend um, at church, 
and they have been going through, through a very difficult season. A terrible season. <laughs> They're an adopted family. They're a foster family. They have um, biological children of their own. They're fostering one and they've adopted one. And so their house is full. I think, I think there's nine total in the family. Well, recently their well was poisoned by a dead animal that had fallen into the well. And this happened weeks ago. And since then, there has been no remedy whatsoever for the, the problem in the well. The, the carcass that is in the well right now decaying. Um, they've gone to the landlord and to no avail. Um, there has not been a response yet. I think a, a well um, professional came out and still not many answers. Excuse me, my throat's a little scratchy, so I might have to sit. <coughs> Um, and now recently, um, they haven't been using the water in the house for weeks now, so they've had to go to other homes to take showers, they've had to rely on folks to bring meals to them, so the church has rallied around them and really, um, try to meet as many of their needs as we possibly can. And friends and family um, are doing the same. But you can imagine the emotional toll that that would start to take. And a friend at church called me the other day and she said, Autumn, I really feel like we're supposed to go on that property and pray over that property and pray over that family. And when she said it, it immediately resonated with me. And um, so I did a call to action at our church and I asked folks to go to the property, pray over it and ask God for the answers. Because right now it looks like, you know, without legal action, nothing is gonna happen. And long story short, several people have been to the church. One lady um, went and prayed over the property, anointed the well with oil, um, asked God to intervene. Another lady did the same thing. And then I decided to go and I drove my car up onto the property and began to pray. And as I was praying, I felt like the Lord gave me a glimpse of the heartache that that family was experiencing right now with not having running water. One family member had been sick for some time, um, believed to be from the contaminants in the well. Um, <clears throat> and actually, God worked a miracle yesterday. Um, that family member had become very sick ended up in the ER and the, the church rallied and prayed. And I, I just talked with the mother just a few minutes ago to ask her permission to tell this story. And um, she said, you absolutely can share this story with um, anyone that wants to listen and, and hear. But her son was deathly sick yesterday morning and had gotten worse and worse over the past few days. And so they were told to bring him to the emergency room, which they did. And what they were told was scary. And she called on the church to pray. Well, actually her sister did. And then um, we began to pray. I began to call on the, uh, on the name of the Lord for him. And um, God worked a miracle yesterday. She said it was a miracle. She said, because... What they were saying was wrong um, and how sick he was. Um, she believed God healed him in that emergency room 
And even today, he is showing signs of recovery. So we're praising the Lord for that. We're praising the Lord for answered prayer today. But as I went up on their property to pray that day, God gave me a glimpse of the heaviness that family was experiencing. And I just weeped before the Lord. And I asked the Lord to cover them and protect them. And I asked the Lord to restore to them the joy of their salvation, despite their circumstances. I asked the Lord to protect their children from any harm because of the contaminants in the well. I I asked the Lord to bring a speedy remedy to this well situation. And we've really just been praying for the answers to come because right now there doesn't seem to be a clear solution on how to handle this. But we know that God has the answer, right? We also know that difficult seasons can give birth to a greater capacity for joy. And that is what I have been praying. Lord, give me a greater capacity for joy. Give me what I need to walk through every life circumstance with joy in my heart and joy on my lips. The, you know, the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, right? So we want to have that praise on our lips all day long, every day. But that's a challenge sometimes when we're facing difficult circumstances, right? But the Lord offers the solution in his word. And I have been praying and asking the Lord, what is the solution to restore the joy of my salvation. And he took me to John 15 again. And I know my last three teachings have been on John 15. It's because the Lord continues to keep saying things to me. And he took me right to verse 11 of John 15. And it says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full or your joy may be complete. There is draining drama all around us. I bet everyone listening today can name a circumstance that has been draining you. I bet those that are listening today can name a circumstance that is drama, that is taking your attention away from what's most important in life. But Christ promises that our joy can remain in those times and our joy can be full and complete. If we look at those verses, we see that the Father's love the Son's love and our love are all intertwined, all connected. Verses 9 and 10, when we abide in him and our love and our joy are perfected in him, when we draw close to the vine, abide in the vine, the vine which is Jesus Christ, the vine dresser who is the Father in heaven. We are the branches. That love and that joy and that peace are perfected in us. Our, our branches, we are the outgrowth of that perfected relationship in Christ. But that outgrowth, that fruit, only comes by being connected. Only comes by drawing close to him. As the father has loved, so has the son. As the father has loved, so the son has loved. 
and so should the community of believers. Love and joy are all connected. This family that's struggling with their well, their the water contamination, our church has a relationship with them. We love them. We want to help them. We want to be Aaron and her to them right now, lift their arms up praying with them for the answer to come, to win this battle. The Lord showed me very clearly that what they're going through is not just a physical battle where the, you know, where we can see what's happening, but there is a spiritual battle going on because they have a calling on their lives. They're called to foster. They're called to little children. They're called to love on little children that need a secure family environment, why wouldn't the enemy attack that? Why wouldn't they become a, a target for the enemy? Not only that, but other things have happened that have caused discouragement for them. Listen, there is no greater love than the love of Jesus. The son's love mirrors and imitates the Father's love. The Son's deep love and giving his life for his friends is no accident, but it stems from his relationship with his Father. It stems from his relationship with his Father. We have the ability to supernaturally love others because that would stem from our relationship with the vine. We are intertwined, we are connected. <clears throat> that joy, that fullness of joy, that complete joy comes from a connection. John 15 maps it out. I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me. Draw near to me. I am the source of your joy. I am what makes your joy complete. I love how he ties prayer into the completeness of love and joy. At the end, let's read it again. He says, I'm sorry, lost my page. <clears throat> that whatever you ask, the Father in my name, he will give it to you. These things I command you that you love one another. When we pray, our prayers are grounded in that abiding in Christ. When we pray, our prayers are coming from a connection of a relationship with Jesus Christ. So whatever we ask in his name, the Father will do it. The prayer will be answered. We can have this confidence and this assurance that our joy, our complete joy, comes from our connection with him. It cannot come from the world. The world's pleasures are momentary. God's love is lasting. Our abiding outlasts the limited opportunities that the world might offer. Our abiding puts our joy where it should be. If you are looking for joy and some pleasure in the world, 
God help you right now? Because that's going to be a painful process for you. Your joy comes from your connection to Jesus. It comes from our intertwined relationship with him. That's where we find our peace. That's where we find our joy. That's where we find the joy of our salvation. <clears throat> I'm going to pray in just a minute for those out there that may need a restoration of joy, that may need to find the joy of their salvation. That moment when you gave your heart to Christ and there was just this overflowing relationship and joy coming from that um, beginning. We have to monitor where our affections lie. I had let the cares of the world steal my joy. I'll just be honest with you. The past year has been hard. My husband came out of cancer treatments. I was diagnosed with cancer. A number of other things took place that were just very draining. And tried. the enemy tried to take away my joy. But thank God that my abiding relationship with him revealed what was happening. And so now I'm taking measures. I'm taking measures to spend day, time daily just praising him because the word of the Lord says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, right? Um, the word of the Lord says, cast your cares on him for he cares for you. If we learn to do these things, if we learn to have that abiding faith, that abiding trust, that abiding love, walking closely with him, spending time in his word. Nothing will steal our joy. Though this world is shaking, we can remain firm and steadfast in him. Though our lives are not going perfect right now, we can still walk in peace and joy and the love of the Lord. Our joy is complete in him. And that comes from abiding in him. Psalm 1611 says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And I love this one. John 16, says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. That should bring us overwhelming fullness of joy. Knowing that Christ came to overcome the world, the heaviness of the world, the influences of the world, the demonic agendas in the world today. We see it. We know it. We have the ability to ask anything in his name, and he will do it. Prayer is the key. Drawing close to the vine is the answer to the fullness of joy. In his presence is fullness of joy. 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9 says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. And are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy 
for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of souls. That's the result. That's where we get our joy from. That's the result. John 15, I love another part of this because God issues a call to all of us. Jesus issues a call right here to those who abide and those who remain in him. You did not choose me, says the Lord, but I chose you. I called you. And I have appointed you to go and bear much fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. Joy. The fruit of the Spirit. Joy. You know, this world just needs for some believers to walk around in joy right now. And I'm preaching this message to myself right now. Um, the world needs for believers to stand up and smile and not be shaken in these perilous times that we are living in. And these are truly perilous times. And if we're not careful, we will take our connection off of the Lord and put our connection on things that we see happening in the world. The news is so disturbing that I can't watch it anymore. It is, it steals my joy in a moment. And it's easy for anger to rise up in me knowing the injustice of some of these things. The battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. What we're seeing right now is end time stuff, prophecy coming true, Bible prophecy coming true. We just need to get our hearts connected to the vine and draw near to him. We need to pray for those who need prayer. We need to draw near to the Lord, strengthen our hearts so that we can take courage in difficult times. That's where true joy is going to come from. That's when... The persecuted can stand up for the Lord and say, I believe in him and I will not turn back because of that connection. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit so that you may overflow. That comes from a connection. That comes from a hunger and a thirst. That comes from spending time in his presence. That comes from drawing near to him. That's how we get the overflow of joy in the power of the Holy Spirit. And those the Lord has rescued will return. This is Isaiah 35, 10. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. That's a promise in Isaiah of the overwhelming joy that we will feel when God brings restoration. I want to close with um, a thought from Ezra. <clears throat> In Nehemiah, actually, it's um, Nehemiah, I'm sorry. In Nehemiah 8, the term, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength, is found in Nehemiah 8.10. It's after the children of Israel returned to Jerusalem from exile. They were listening to the law 
being read to them and were overcome with condemnation and weeping for their sinfulness. And this is what the scripture reads. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go, enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord will address our sinfulness, right? But when that sinfulness is addressed and God brings restoration like he did, bringing the people out of exile, he says, rejoice. I have done a great thing for you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Walk in it, right? I just believe that the Lord <clears throat> wants to restore today the joy of some of you who have been going through difficult seasons. You feel like your strength is gone. You feel like the enemy has just railroaded over you. You feel like your power has been sapped from you. And that you're just barely getting by. The Lord wants to restore your strength today. He wants to renew in you a right spirit. <clears throat> so that's what I want to pray today. For a renewal of joy. And that the Lord would provide you just like he did in Nehemiah just like he did in Nehemiah 8. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So let's pray. Father God, I come before you thanking you and praising you, Lord. I ask you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to be our strength, be our joy. Lord, that we would have an encounter with you. Lord, that would restore to us the joy of our salvation. Lord, that your hope would fill us with joy and your peace would help us to walk in the fullness of joy and that your Holy Spirit would empower us even in dark seasons, Lord, to be restored in our joy. Lord, we will rejoice in you, and again we will rejoice in you because that connection to you restores us. Guards us, gives us hope, gives us peace. That intertwined relationship with you and the Father, Lord, the connection to the vine, gives us the strength we need to face any challenge. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to look to you who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Help us to abide in you, abide close to you, draw near to you. Lord, and that peace and joy and love would rule and reign and be fruit in our lives. That it would not be a show or a performance for others, Lord, but there would be a true work in our hearts, a true welling up of joy. Father, that we would not base our joy on the daily 
things going on in our lives, the daily challenges in our lives, Lord, but we would base our joy in you. Lord, I'm thankful that you chose me and you called me to bear fruit. You called me to go and bear fruit that remains. Lord, help me to live out the fruit of the Spirit every day in my life. Father God, help me to be the kind of believer that walks in love, that, Father God, that, that you are glorified, that your name is glorified in my actions, in the way I carry myself in the way that I behave before others. Lord, that my joy would be full. My love would be a supernatural love for others. Lord, that I will walk in the peace that passes all understanding because that's your provision for me when I remain connected to the vine. Lord, that I would be long-suffering with those that get under my skin, that test me, that cause me to take my eyes off of you, Lord, that I would be long-suffering towards them, that I would pray for them, that I would be patient, that I would be kind. Lord, that you would fill me with your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord. The fruit of the Spirit. Lord, that in you I would produce much fruit. Lord, that those who are watching right now, Lord, that you would begin to build the fruit of the Spirit within them, that they would connect to you, connect to your vine, that they would find their strength, their love, their joy, perfected in you because of that connection. Father God, yes, this world, this world brings trouble. But your scriptures say that you have overcome the world. And that Satan can have no power over us. And so, Lord, I thank you that I can walk in your power that I can walk in your Holy Spirit, that I can draw my strength from you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. These are truly troubling times that we're living in, but you have promised that we can have joy and peace, that we can walk in faithfulness and kindness. Lord, help us to be the example to the world. Help the church to rise up and be the example to the world of what true joy and peace and faithfulness is. Let the church be the church, the body of Christ that rises up, that overturns evil for good. Whatever Satan has meant for evil, Lord, that you would turn around for the good. Father, I just pray for the peace and comfort of those families that have lost children and loved ones in Texas. Lord, that you would heal their broken hearts and bind up their wounds. Father God, that you would just break every demonic assignment over the hearts and lives of people. True evil was perpetrated there. But Lord, I pray that your true love would rise up in God's people 
to surround and love on those families that are hurting. Because you are true joy and love and peace and goodness and kindness. Lord, that we would be that example to the world. Lord, that that well would spring up in us of joy and peace and goodness and kindness and long-suffering and faithfulness. There is no law when we're exemplifying the fruit of the Spirit. That should be innate in us. It should grow in us. It should dwell in us. Lord, we have removed you as a nation from our schools, from our gov government, from our from every area that's important, Lord, and forgive us as a nation that we've turned our back on you. Lord, help us as a nation to cling to you, to hunger for you, to thirst for you. Help us as, as a nation to turn our hearts back to you. It is sin that is ravaging the world right now. It is sinful hearts perpetuating evil upon the earth right now. Satan has his agenda, but Lord, you have yours. And yours is to save as many souls as you can and then return and take us. And so, Lord, I'm looking forward to that return. I'm looking forward to that day. But in the meantime, Lord, may I be found faithful, doing your work, living for you, trusting in you, carrying out your call in my life with effectiveness. There is no greater love than one who would lay down his life for another. You gave the example of true love. Your relationship with the Father Lord Jesus produced life for all of us. It was your will to carry out his will and that was to give your life as a ransom for many. Lord, I thank you for that work on the cross. I thank you, Lord, that no one has to die in their sin because of you. That everyone that calls on your name will be saved. And so, Lord, I pray for many souls to come to know you. Many eyes to be open to the sinfulness of this world. Those, Lord, whose eyes that have been darkened and calloused Pray you'd open their eyes, remove the blinders and the scales from their eyes so that they can see you as their savior, so that they can see that the government can't save them. You are the only one who saves. You bring true salvation. The things of this world will pass away your word will not pass away and you will bring it to pass you have promised that help us Lord help us Lord to live for you 
help us in Jesus name in Jesus name I pray Amen. thank you all for joining me here today for prayer again tonight at 7 p.m. we will not have live prayer because I was supposed to be praying and I have another meeting I have to be in tonight. So I did it at this time in lieu of tonight's prayer. So I hope you will listen in and take some time to um, ask the Lord to awaken something in you, whether it's joy or, or whatever. Um, he desires to do that. He desires for you to have the fullness of joy in your life. Amen. God bless you all.